All right, we're down here on my property today in Virginia here at Rocket Chair Ridge, and we're about to start work on a project that I'm really excited about. We're standing in an area that was clear cut about 30 years ago. It's about five acres in size, and you can see the response all around me was, it's just, this is a south facing slope, soil quality is really poor, and the response was almost exclusively Virginia pine. All the pine trees behind me that you can see in this whole area are Virginia pine. And over the years, this area's honestly been neglected and they've grown straight up. They've shaded out the understory. It's a biological desert in here. There's very little food, even less cover, but there is an opportunity to really give this area a facelift. If you see behind me, there are several oaks, mainly white oaks, mainly uh, specifically post oaks scattered throughout this entire area that this tree is actually probably a heck of a lot older than it looks relative to its size. But because these pines grew up so quickly, shaded everything else out, are slowly dying, honestly. There's, there's several behind you that you can see, they still have their leaves on, but they just need sunlight. And unfortunately, a lot in this area are, if you walk through, you can snap them off and, and they're just dying from a lack of sunlight. So what we're gonna do is terminate these pine trees. It's kind of a unique situation because the, the stem density is so significant in this area. These trees are stacked so tightly together. It's not marketable timber. We can't come in here and have it logged. We want to protect these young white oaks. So we don't want to bring in a forestry mulcher or a, do a dozer and disturb the area too much. And we can't cut the trees down ourselves because as you can see, they're stacked so tight together. If I were to cut this tree, it would just fall and get hung up and we just have dead trees stacked on top of one another vertically. So for the bigger trees about this size and bigger, I'm gonna double girdle with the chainsaw. I'm not gonna use any herbicide, just a double girdle will kill these pine trees over time. Trying to limit some of our herbicide use, save some cost in the process. And then the smaller pine trees, we will hack and squirt and use, a, use an herbicide to terminate those trees. But it's, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of trees in here that need to be removed. But it's a really cool opportunity because I'm excited to see the response in this area. There is a lot of greenbrier. There's a lot of native shrubs in here, coral berry, deer berry specifically. This whole area, it, it has a lot of potential, but it just needs some sunlight, which we are going to provide. And then once this area gets some sun, these oaks I know are going to be super thankful. They're going to take off. We're going to get a flush of native forbs and grasses. Probably have to follow up with some invasive treatment, but that's part of the game these days. And I don't know, I'm excited. A lot of work to be done. But we're going to get started and start killing some Virginia pine. It's really all it takes with a double girdle to kill these pine trees. These Virginia pine especially, and I've learned this the hard way unfortunately, you have to cut pretty significantly into the tree. A lot of trees you, they, you can just cut a, an inch into the cambium and that's enough. But these pine trees, especially with this thick flaky bark, cut a little further in than, than you normally would. These are hardy trees, they can grow in pretty poor soil. So to give them some credit, they're, they're a tough tree to kill, but that's all it takes. This tree is dead, it doesn't know it yet. But if you look up and this tree dies, you can see the hole in the canopy it will create. And then all this sun will hit the ground. The stream right here will be super thankful. These oaks behind us will be super thankful. And then of course, the wildlife will respond to that. But it's the first of many, we gotta kill. We're gonna get to work, see what we can get done. All right, so we're gonna use, I think this tree right here, this red oak is a perfect example to illustrate what we're trying to accomplish. In this stand, most of these oaks, I'm assuming are the same age, plus or minus a couple 
years of each other, but you can see how tall that tree is as a result of that little hole in the canopy and that little bit of sunlight giving this tree an opportunity to grow. Yeah, just a lot of these oaks. There's a bunch of like oaks uh, throughout here. I'm sure squirrels, etc., jays, as we learned, can plant these things. But as Cody mentioned, just a little bit of sunlight, the, the, the growth is amazing. When you have these trees that are just restricted and just, just get enough light to grow, how, I mean, man, it's just amazing how old this tree pro probably is. It's just lack of sun, that food and energy that they need. And you can see how closed that canopy is up there. And this tree is significantly shorter and honestly feels and looks a lot less healthy. Oh yeah. Oh, just growing, trying to find a little bit of light, like all of us. I talked about the potential that this whole area has and this little pocket of Greenbrier right here beside me is just a perfect example of what this area will be once we finish this project and this whole area I mean it's people talk about how eastern red cedar some people love it because it's a thicket and they think deer bed in it and it's this tremendous wildlife habitat this is this this is a similar situation these pines they're stacked so tightly together you think that it's thick there's a lot of cover in here and when in reality, there's not. I mean, once we open the canopy, get some sunlight, this area is gonna explode with greenbrier. There's already a decent amount of it in here, but if you pan around and see, there's not any cover in this area for a fawn to hide, for a turkey to nest. I've seen some grouse on this part of the property. And you know, you, again, you think, oh, this, there's good cover in here for grouse, but the can there's, there's no cover ground level to protect from avian predators, a hawk, an owl can easily sit up through here, cruise right through this timber and pluck a poor grouse off the ground before he even knows what happened. But having little pockets of timber, uh, greenbrier right here, obviously it's a great deer food, but it's also cover for birds. It's also cover for a nesting turkey and it provides just what Eric always talks about, cover that equals food. And as we work on this area and improve the habitat in it, it's only gonna get better from here. What's wrong with this picture? I am wise, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> I'm covered in sawdust. I got a squirt bottle, I got a hatchet, I got a helmet, been running a saw. And you look like you're ready to go to winter formal. <laughs> Valentine's Day dance. Hey, remember those days. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some of us is taking this wildlife habitat improvement job seriously while others <laughs> just coast into the finish line see with age comes wisdom that's all i gotta say anyway you would think <laughs> this is a cool project this whole area it really is i know when you showed it to me yeah i was like okay okay but he, he was really excited about it yeah once we got in here i mean you're looking you see all these little baby oaks and they're all like cody was saying they're all the same age i would assume right, right. we could be off a little bit but yeah. man they just need a little bit of TLC. A little TLC. There's or a TSI. Little, there you go. A little TSI. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's a really unique situation, I think, because like you mentioned, there's not a lot of situations are you doing TSI 
on pines releasing oaks in this situation. We can't cut them ourselves. That's that would that's what I would rather do. Oh, yeah. Honestly, is cut these trees. Again, they're not big enough. It's not marketable timber. We can't have it logged. Mm -hmm. So we have to get creative and we're double girdling. We're hacking and squirting. It's a really unique opportunity where we have to be creative. But again, the potential that this area has is significant. We're going to show some follow-up videos as we continue to manage it and see the response. And this summer, you know, the more the more canopy we open, mm -hmm. the screen briar, shrubs, grasses. I'm excited to see how yeah. wildlife uses this spot. Yeah, the pounds per acre here is just. Yeah. But it does have the potential to produce. You know, not like maybe 2,500 pounds per acre, but it does have the potential to at least give some ground cover yeah. for the grouse, the berries, all that stuff, yeah. you know, etc. So, for sure. Yeah, sky's the limit for, for this project. There's a lot of work to be done. By no means are we finished <laughs> at all. There's a lot of cutting to be done, but I'm excited. And I mean, I, I, to be honest, I'd be a little disappointed if, if I didn't have an opportunity to, to do this type of work. And mm -hmm. as it is for me, I know it is for you. Okay. I'm sure it is for you as well. Wildlife. It's our way of life.